Hey everybody, it's your man James, uh, back again with some new video action for you. Uh, today we're going to be doing something uh, you haven't seen for a little bit around here. We're going to be doing a comic book review. You guys might remember I was doing these back in uh, a little while back there, and uh, I stopped because, well, I started to notice that whenever I would review a new book, it was probably something I was going to hate, and if I reviewed a back issue, it was probably something I love, which is why it's still in my collection today. So it seemed kind of pointless to do reviews when you're already going to know the outcome of the... Uh, the review just by knowing if the book is new or old so kind of stopped but uh, uh in looking for ways to get more content on this channel i thought maybe i'd try to head back with this and uh what i thought i'll do is i'll review the uh crowdfunded comics that uh, i've been getting because i've built up a, a small stash uh over the last you know bit of time here and i figure hopefully this will be a way of uh, being able to bring surprise back into the reviews rather than just figuring, oh, he's going to hate it because it's new or love it because it's old. And I figured, uh, you know, what better way to start than with one done by a couple of guys who uh, helped first me her, uh, helped foster my love of comics in the first place, which is Tom DeFalco and Ron Friends. And this is their book, The Right Project from Apex Comics Group. Now, this book has uh, been a while in production, I would tell you that much. Uh, this was probably created back in 2001. So this is a book, a book 20 years in the making. And uh, in this book here, you got multiple uh, stories. Uh, so does it live up to the hype? Is it worth the 20-year wait? Or, uh, you know, does uh, more stories not necessarily mean better content? Well, I guess we're going to find out. So this here is our titular hero, Mr. Wright. He's a hologram made real through a process of a, a creator called Professor Click. You can see right here from the start, we get some great Friends and Buscema artwork right off, this, right off the jump. Some really great action splash here so uh and uh what we find out is is that the professor you know his uh his uh technology is called reality integrated gravitic hologram technology which you know if you take those first letters of each word you know what it spells and what it does is it makes holograms able to interact with the real world but uh, he seems to be having problems making it stable and uh, there are some people here from the government who are checking this out and they decide, well, uh, we're going to take over and uh, run this from now on, even though uh, the professor is completely against it. You can see here, the dis you know, whoa, did you say military? This discussion is over. That's exactly why I don't want the government involved. And then, boom, this guy here called Big Brother, you know, a little on the nose right there if you ask me, uh, calls in the troops and they take over. So our hero here... Jeffrey Lopez, who creates the Mr. Wright character with the te professor's technology, uh, becomes a target because they find out that that file is missing. And so he boots it up and brings Mr. Wright to life to uh, take down some government goons. And as you can see here, Mr. Wright uh, you know, makes easy work of these guys. But we come to learn that when Mr. Wright suffers physically, so does Jeffrey. There seems to be a psychic connection to them that uh, no one has explained yet. So, Mr. Wright heads inside, takes on Big Brother, whips him fairly easily, and then uh, it's all over. And then uh, the other agent there, the female agent, says that she's going to still stick around to try to convince the professor to share his technology with the government, as well as figure out who Mr. Wright is. And that's where it ends. And then we get to our next story. Again, another great splash here from Friends and Buscema. And we come to see they're testing out Mr. Wright to see what his capabilities are. And it turns out that while Jeffrey, he's solid enough when Jeffrey is controlling him, when others try to, it doesn't work out. It goes to the same problems the professor was having before. And then that's all we see of that. And then, boom, we head over to another story involving Jeffrey's mother, who's a cop, who uh, is uh, gets involved in a story where a... A wrestling federation type uh, guru is threatened to be killed and so she goes to one of the uh, matches to check things out and well there he is he ends up dead in the ring and then it doesn't end there because now she's getting threats so of course uh, Jeffrey uh, feels it's time for Mr. Wright to go into action to protect his mom and we come to find out that the wrestler double trouble is the one behind all the threats. So Mr. Wright jumps in, he goes in, does some battling. We find out that it's only the one side that wants to be the killer and the other one 
doesn't really want that. You know, you see right here, talk about a split personality. Why didn't you stop him sooner? He's my brother. I didn't want to believe he was really capable of murder. See, there is so. And of course, then the story ends with, you know, the kids being found out about sneaking out with Mr. Wright. And then our final story here with art by Ron Lim and Robert Jones. It features the other character that uh, DeFalco created back in 2001 called Randy O'Donnell is the Man, about a kid who gets sucked to a, a, a different, a, a faraway planet and becomes a hero there. And here he's kind of, you know, he gave you the backstory on him. And really this is just a story to, uh, you know, familiarize you with Randy again after 20 years, and then to get him in, in, in there with Mr. Wright so you can say that they're both in the same universe, as you can see here, Randy and Jeffrey meet. You know, is that a friend of yours, Jeffrey? Not really, Carolyn. His name is Randy O'Donnell, but he's nobody special. So, and that's pretty much the end of the book. Now, uh, you know, probably wonder, so did I like this? Is it good? Was it great? Do I recommend it? Uh, I give it about a five out of 10. I mean, it's not bad. You know, it wasn't anything I, I'm reading it and I hated it. It's just, it feels too light. It's not a very fulfilling read, you know, and especially at the price point, you know, this, I got, now I got the fancy or shiny cover here, as you can see. And that was 25 bucks. I don't think this is worth uh, $25 of reading. I think the biggest problem here is that DeFalco is, you know, trying to to play up the fun aspects more than he is trying to give you an actual, you know, uh, a, you know, fulfilling story. You know, something that's more substantial. I mean, there is little bits in here, you know, like uh, here in the... In the uh, wrestling story, you know, you got this right here, you know, Savage Stan and Killer King Kirby. You know, that's a little shout out to Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, you know. So, I mean, little little things like that are great. And, and you know, there's not to say there's nothing in here that's of any interest. I mean, you know, you got the psychic connection between Jeffrey and Mr. Wright. How does that work? You know, and why is it that uh, Mr. Wright only works for Jeffrey but no one else? You know, these are little, little tidbits that are in there that are interesting but the Falcon never really expands on them enough for you to, to really get into the story. You know, it's none of the characters are, are, you know, more than just, you know, what their surface level traits are. And that's, uh, that's kind of disappointing because I've always loved the Falco's work in the past. You know, his Amazing Spider-Man work, his Thor work, his Spider-Girl work. I've loved it all. So to see him kind of like, you know, almost phoning it in, it seems, is a little bit of a letdown. And then, of course, you get to that final story where it's, Randy O'Donnell meets Mr. Wright, and it's like, you know, this is obviously just to bring Randy and Mr. Wright together to say that they're in the same universe. It really didn't add anything to the story. It didn't add anything to the characters, either one of them. You know, it just it just felt, you know, again, like very not very substantive. I would like more on, on the connection between Mr. Wright and Jeffrey, you know, and, and maybe if they would have just had this this first story lasting longer. You know, just do one solid story with, with them, you know, where you could have focused more on you know, how the, how they develop the technology, why the government is so interested, you know, what's the connection between Mr. Wright and Jeffrey, and why are they so psychically connected? I mean, there's so much of this stuff that, is, you know, there's stuff that is interesting in it, but it never gets properly developed. And, you know, it, it, the stories suffer for it. So getting three short stories that don't really fulfill versus getting one story that's longer but might be more filling, I think that's a better way to go. So can I recommend this? I mean, I guess maybe if you're like 10 years old or younger, maybe you might enjoy this just for the sheer, you know, fun factor, you know, where, you know, because you got this guy who's, you know, because another thing too is you don't really know what Mr. Wright's powers are. You see, he's kind of acrobatic and whatnot, but does he have super strength? You know, because he comes, you know, he's, he's right here, you know, when he gets dog piled and then he quickly throws him off. Is that super strength or is that just his, uh, agility at work we don't really know and funny thing is is you know we say he's got the psychic connection with Jeffrey but yet here he gets dogpiled and Jeffrey suffers no effects this time why is that you know just so many little things that just you know like I said it just it just didn't leave it very filling for me so I you know can I give a recommend no not really like I said a five out of ten it's not bad work you know I like the old school style you know of friends and, and Ron Lim their art is beautiful as it always is but uh, yeah, this one is just just a, a, a swing and a miss. You know, I appreciate the uh, old school feel. I appreciate the great artistry. I appreciate them trying to, you know, give us something in the vein of the classic superhero mold. 
but they just didn't put enough enough meat on the bones here to uh to really engage you that much if you're you know again if you're maybe you're 10 years or younger you might find it fun but short of that yeah i don't think anyone else is really gonna gonna want to be into this and 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 again it's you know it, at the price point you know you gotta you gotta think about you know your your value as well so yeah i don't say it's not one you gotta run out and get but hope i hope that maybe if they do future installments friends and the falco will focus more on telling a more meatier story that's more entertaining more gripping and focus us on trying to be you know just mindless fun because i don't think that's going to cut it in uh in the comic book uh, model of today so uh that'll about do it for this review hope you guys enjoyed checking it out and then if you did please leave a like and subscribe to the channel you know if you got some comments you, you know, if you read this you got some comments you think i'm right you think i'm wrong whatever you think drop me a comment down there because i always want to hear what you guys got to say and uh hopefully i'll be back with some more stuff very soon and until then take care